Hello again and welcome everyone. Today we will be further continuing our lecture and this will be around page 129. So now we are on page 129 of USMLE first aid uh, step 1 2021 microbiological section and we are talking about this true spore forming bacteria and bacterial virulence factor. So we have talked a lot of things. We have talked about the bacterial structure then how we can identify by doing a strain then how we can culture then further we have gone into the other things as well like biofilm formation this will be the spore forming bacteria and what are their virulence factor actually spore forming is itself a virulence factor of some of the bacteria because those bacteria which can get the harsh condition which gets a difficult condition which they get the nutrition deficit condition in their such scenario they will convert into the spore and though spore forming bacteria are only gram positive bacteria you will come to you will know about this certain species like uh, bacillus anthracis bacillus cereals clostridium titani clostridium difficile clostridium perfringens and clostridium botulinum these all are the gram positive bugs gram positive bugs they are responsible for this spore formation so you have to remember that only gram positive bacteria is responsible for spore formation and among them also there is only two species main that is bacillus and clostridium species that if you have are able to remember then that will be enough to solve this question although they are very medically important bacteria let me go through it some bacteria can form spore at the end of the stationary phase when nutrition are limited so before us understanding this stationary phase you have to understand this bacterial growth cycle so how does bacteria multiply how does bacteria replicate that you have to understand from here you can see there is the lag phase log phase stationary phase and decline phase for in a life cycle of the bacteria the bacteria start its growth in lag phase they uh, they do not multiply they do just prepare there for multiplication and prepare there for that just they prepare there for multiplication but they do not multiply in lag phase while they enter into the log phase after four to six hours then in log phase they starts to multiply okay so this four to six hour is actually this whole cycle they will take multiplication is just 20 minutes for the most of the entire bacteria see but uh, when you grow into the certain media like uh, when you go into the peptonogar and something then they we give the incubation temperature and after that they start multiplying and multiplying so we are talking about the, this uh, only in the not in the medium we are we can we can talk about this bacterial life cycle as a separate you have to remember that bacteria can multiply within 20 minutes but when you are talking about the growth into the media or in the food available then they goes through this lag log stationary and decline phase in the lag phase they just prepare themselves for multiplication then in log phase they start multiplying and the major multiplication is stayed here over in the log phase where the bacterial count will be grow and grow and grow then they come to the stationary phase where the multiplication and death of the bacteria both becomes equal why there is because the lack of the food and resources and in the decline phase there will be a death rate will be more in comparison to the multiplication so the major important thing is that the, when there is a log phase the bacteria is multiplying they need to form the all those new peptidoglycan layer so in that stage only beta-lactam antibiotic that is penicillin, cephalosporin, carbapenems, azitronam, this all will act only in this multiplying phase. A bacteria which is not multiplying you will not be killed by the penicillin group of antibiotics that you have to understand. So this phase is important for killing those bacteria. This phase is important for them to grow their, their population. But for us this is, phase is important to kill their bacteria. We can target at this stage only. At the stationary and decline phase there will be the bacteria will be not multiplying and since there is no new peptidoglycan formation we cannot invade the peptidoglycan formation by inhibitory transpeptidase enzyme that is the penicillin group of antibiotics okay so just remember that log phase in log phase only we act through the antibiotics now in a stationary phase since there is a, a lack of the resources now they start to form the spore means any harsh condition if they found difficult situation outside then they will convert into the spore and those are when the nutrition are limited spores are highly resistant to heat and chemicals so those spores why they have converted into their themselves as a spore because they cannot be easily killed they cannot be easily destroyed and so because of that they are highly resistant to heat and chemicals so with the high temperature say 100 degrees celsius it will not be damaged even in with the lot of chemicals it will not be get damaged that you have to understand then it has a high dipyclonic acid in their core and that is necessary that protects us from this heat and chemicals they also have this no metabolic activity so they since they have converted themselves into this spore they don't need any nutrition they don't need any supply to 
grow or to make for the survive or to metabolize they are still surviving this for, for long years and years all the bacteria can be dead if they are in the vegetative state within a few days but in the spore they can survive in years and years that you have to understand now they for to kill them they, we must autoclave to kill the spore without autoclaving that is temperature is 121 degrees celsius and not this temperature into 15 minutes for 15 pressure per square inch so there is a high pressure with a high temperature only then spore is killed there are certain uh, organism which is known as the uh, autoclave so autoclave is done for all this surgical instrument in the hospital everything we do autoclave and autoclave is done at 121 degree celsius at 15 pressure square per uh, pressure per square inch at for 15 minutes that we have 15 to 30 minutes that you have to understand so this autoclave is the most commonly used machine in the all hospitals and clinics where we, we used to sterile everything with we you use in this uh, what um, hospitals say okay now coming to the other sporic other sporicidal what other are the chemicals that can kill those spores are the hydrogen peroxide and iodine so iodine as well as the hydrogen peroxide will also help you help you to kill those spores now what are the organisms that can produce these spores there are can be bacillus anthracis bacillus cereus colostrum titani colostrum difficile colostrum perfusis and colostridium botulinum now talking about the bacillus anthracis which is responsible for anthrax and bacillus cereus which is responsible for food poisoning so these are the medically important organism you have heard about lot of the issue that they are uh, certain spores are transported into the later and then transferred to the male or to the later they can trans uh, transport to the um, many places even the u.s uh, president has been many were attacked through the letters and they as usually transport this spore the spore of the bacillus anthracis and since they they can tr easily transport into the paper they can keep in the envelope they can keep it in the letter and then uh, send it and if you open that spore will be come into environment and when you inhale then you get this anthrax so that was and that can be one of the way of bioterrorism so you have to understand this is a very medically important organ organism how they can turn they can be transported on the form of the spore and what does spore do a spore is actually a resistant form but when they you inhale inside your body then when this appropriate way it's actually get converted from a bacteria into the spore when there is a difficult condition when there is a harsh condition but when they, you get a appropriate food appropriate nutrition suitable environment then again it come back into the normal bacterial vegetation normal bacteria and then it can cause you the disease and same way this uh, trans transport of this uh, spore into the envelope or later and then get it if we inhale that spore they go inside our body and we get it can become a favorable environment for them and they grow and they will cause the disease similarly there is a vessel uh, cereals which is responsible for the food poisoning and there are other bacteria which are very important like clostridium titani you have heard about the titanus there was a, one of the major diseases in uh, when we have no this vaccination even now also if you are not getting vaccinated and this clostridium titani any wound infection after any rusty uh, say uh, needle or any wound infection any um, and major road traffic accidents they all we what do we do we get the titanus injection why we get this tt because this spore the bacterial spore is present in the environment in an abundant amount they are present in the soil and if you are not getting this vaccination this spore are there they will get into your wound get into inside your body then germinate into the bacteria and then cause you the tetanus which is one of the very bad disease actually if you we will talk about the tetanus and there you, then we can understand that it's really leading some it can be fatal many times that you have to understand then there is a clostridium difficile we have heard about this uh, antibiotic associated diarrhea uh, when we use antibiotic all is all normal flora is killed but clostridium difficile are not killed so they grow and they form pseudomembrane colitis and then they you develop the diarrhea in the hospital acquired patient so in the hospital somebody is getting a prolonged antibiotics and then to develop the clostridium difficile diarrhea and this diarrhea this actually uh, spore the spore of this clostridium difficile is usually not killed by this normal uh, chemicals they need to be either you have used hydrogen peroxide or iodine which you cannot use under no, uh, raw hand hydrogen peroxide so well, hand wash is only one option for eradicating this colostrum difficile spore then talking about the colostrum perfinges colostrum perfinges from the gas gangrene this is responsible for the wound infection and that is actually also commonly found 
then there is another called cholestriodium botulinum which is used for the bot botulinum which is can cause botulism infantile botulism even cholestriodium botulinum people women uh, previously queens they were used to inject into their skin to make her beautiful to relax their skin in a small amount but when you get a large amount then people can be paralyzed so that is, is a very very toxic a uh, very powerful toxin this botulism toxin now talking about their spore, silic uh, colostridium titani it causes titanus, it has a terminal and it's a spherical. So at the end of the bacteria, there is a terminal and a spherical, the spherical uh, spore which appears as a drumstick appearance. So colostridium titani has a terminal and a spherical spore uh, appear as a drumstick appearance. Then there is a colostridium difficile which causes pseudomembrane colonitis, it has terminal and oval. So terminal and oval, here we have not mentioned, here we have mentioned the terminal and oval and that is the badminton racket so it is, appears as a badminton racket this appears as a drum stick when there is a colostridium perfinges which causes gas gangrene as a sharp terminal so not at the terminal terminal and there will be the colostridium botulinum which causes botulism it will present at the central central spore so these are actually maybe not important for your viewers family but can be important for other microbiological students because this position may be asked to them it has not a clinical significance we have a clinical significance like colostrum titanic cause titanus colostrum difficile cause remembrance colitis and colostrum perfusion cause gas gangrene and colostrum botulism can botulism so that is the important sometime it can be important for other microbiological student okay now coming to the bacterial virulence factor bacterial virulence factor there are three virulence factor that is protein a and immunoglobin a protease and m protein there are other as well but these are the three main important which you have to remember protein a known as the what is the protein a do usually you have heard about the optionization and phagocytosis what is optionization it is the increase uh, phagocytosis it is one of the way that bacteria is phagocytized uh, rapidly that is known as optionization so for optionization there are the two things responsible one is the hemoglobin g and there is the complement 3 so if both what a, pro a bacteria do a produce a substance that is known as the protein A which bind to this optionizing structure. Optionization is done by immunoglobin G and complement 3A, 3B actually. So this immunoglobin G and complement 3B, these both are responsible for formation of this uh, optionization. Now this FC portion of this immunoglobin, they give what to do. This FC portion, this is the FC and this is the FAB. So in the FC portion, this protein A, protein A get attached. Now since it is attached over there, the receptor for the macrophage, they cannot go and attach to the macrophage and optionization is prevented. So this is done by Staphylococcus aureus. Or Staphylococcus aureus produce the protein A, protein A bind to the immunoglobin G which is responsible for this optionization. Since it bind to the one of the end to the FC portion of this uh, uh, immunoglobin G, it cannot optionize those bacteria and then since that for that, now this bacteria Staphylococcus aureus is not optionized, not phagocytized, and this is the virulence factor that evade your immune system, that escape from your immune system, and you will cause your disease. So that's why Staph aureus is causing frequent infection. We see the many common infection in the hospitals and a community about the Staph aureus. Now coming to the immunoglobin A protease. Immunoglobin A protease are what are the enzymes that cleavage immunoglobin A. So what will, what will do, uh, happen if they cleavage immunoglobin A? You have to remember immunoglobin A is present all over your body, inside. So it is present inside the nose, inside the mouth, inside the all the mucous membrane, inside the GI tract, inside the respiratory tract, inside the urogenital tract. So all the mucous membrane, there is a layer of immunoglobin A which is protecting, protecting us from getting infection. Now, those organisms which can produce this immunoglobin protease A, what happen? That protective layer will be damaged. Since it will be damaged, this allows the bacteria to adhere. adhere. Then it, our respiratory epithelium, now they will go and adhere to the, no, to the epithelium. So the protective layer that was the immunoglobin A is now breached. Now they go and uh, adhere and colonize to the mucous membrane and then cause you the pathogenesis and then cause you the disease. The major IgA protease producing organism are streptococcus pneumonia, common cause of the uh, community acquired pneumonia, amphalous influenza type B, again the common cause of uh, this uh, epiglottitis and say in otitis media and respiratory tract infection in the children and the Nigeria. This is also again most common cause uh, of the meningitis and urethritis in, in case of Nigeria gonadi. So this same that is the streptococcus pneumonia Hemophilus influenzae and Nigeria. These three are the organisms that produce this immunoglobin A protease that 
cleavage your uh, defense system that is the layer of hemoglobin A which is present on the mucous membrane and then these bacteria adhere there and colonize there and then cause the disease. There is another M protein. M protein is now you have heard about this. It help in the prevent the phagocytosis expressed by the group A streptococci. You have heard about the uh, rheumatic fever or this, this about this. So the rheumatic fever is developed by group A streptococci. Why? Because of the sequence hemolosy with the human tropomyosin and myosin molecular mimicry in the heart. So your heart muscles have a similar structure that of the M protein. And when the, this group, B, group A streptococci enter inside your body, they cause the disease, then the, our immune system recognizes and from the antibody and after and we get recovered from the group A streptococcal infection, after two or three weeks what happened, this antibody is circulating in your own new body and then they found the structure same as the M protein. So they will think, okay, I have a, still the bacteria is persisting and they will attack that M, pro, M protein like material that is our tropomyosin and myosin of our own heart and they will cause us acute rheumatic fever. So there is a molecular memory which is responsible for the autoimmune disease that is rheumatic fever and that is responsible for causing the progression of the disease. Actually group A streptococcal infection is a mild infection of your throat only but when it due to the its molecular memory it causes the long and uh, morbidity and mortality that is the problem. So I hope you have understood this uh, uh, useful lecture and we can continue further. Thank you.